What up folks, it's Alex here and I'm back with another video and today we're going to have a look at this. This is the Sonar 35mm f2.8 prime lens by Zeiss for the Sony system. Now it's actually one of the oldest FE lenses that you can get because this was announced and released back in 2013 alongside the original Sony a7 and the original a7R. It is only a 2.8, it's 5 years old and the price tag is still quite hefty. So is it still worth your time in 2018? Let's take a look. So let's start off by talking about the build quality and the handling. It's an FE lens, so it's designed for the Sony A series, the full frame series, but it does mount very well on the APS-C cameras like the A6000, A6300 and A6500. On full frame, it's a 35mm. On a crop sensor camera, it has an equivalent field of view of 52mm. The most obvious thing you'll notice about this lens is that it's small. It's not quite a pancake lens, but it's not far off. It's tiny. And because of that size, it fits equally well on the A6 and the A7 series of cameras. It's also super light at only 120 grams. So light, in fact, that when combined with the A7R2, it has a total weight of only 760 grams. It's super portable. You can throw this in the side pocket of your bag and it won't take up much room at all. And even when you do get your camera out, it's not going to put a crook in your neck or bother you too much because it's so light you can happily carry this around all day. The other benefit of its diminutive stature is it's super unobtrusive. You put this lens on an A6000 or 6300 for example and it looks just like a regular digital camera. It doesn't look particularly impressive. So people don't pay a huge amount of attention to you. They don't feel intimidated even shoving this big lens in their face. They're quite happy to carry on about their business and not pay you too much attention at all. Which makes this really good for events, weddings, street photography, that sort of thing. The sort of photography where you don't really want to get noticed. Even though it's small and light, it does have a reassuring density to it. It doesn't feel cheap and plasticky. The exterior is made of metal, as is the mount, and the filter thread at the front, all are metal. The internals are plastic. Now it does come with a very interesting lens hood, which I don't have, because I bought this used. So you're not gonna see that in this review. It doesn't have a rubber gasket on the rear, but Sony do say that it is dust and water resistant. Apparently the seal itself is so tight that it doesn't require a rubber gasket. Now I have shot with this lens in some mild rain and it's never skipped a beat so i have confidence in that i wouldn't take it out on a downpour or a thunderstorm but a light bit of drizzle and you'll probably be fine the lens itself is pretty scarce there's no focus hold buttons or autofocus to manual focus switches the only control you do have on the lens is the manual focus ring which is nicely weighted and pretty smooth now as it's a sony lens it's a fly-by-wire system so it doesn't actually have any dead stops it'll just keep going to infinity there is some branding on the lens. There's the lovely blue Zeiss logo on the left hand side, depending on which way you look at it. You've got the F2.8 35mm on the top, and then you've got Sony on the right hand side. And that is all you get. This lens doesn't have any image stabilization built in, but at 35mm, that shouldn't be a deal breaker for you. 35mm is generally relatively easy to hold steady, especially on full frames. It's quite a wide field of view. But if you're shooting on an uh, A7 II or onwards, or an A6500, then you get built-in image stabilization anyway, so that shouldn't be too much of a worry for you. If you're shooting on an A6000, A6300, then it may be more of an issue, because neither of those have image stabilization, and obviously on those cameras you'll be looking at a 52mm so you may start to get some camera shake in lower light. And that's about it. It's a very well constructed lens. It's small, it's light, it's super portable, it's unobtrusive, it's somewhat weather sealed but it doesn't have image stabilisation. That about covers the build. Image quality is very, very good, at least from my experience. It's sharp in the centre from f2.8 onwards and the corners are relatively sharp, but as you stop it down to a 4 f5.6, they sharpen up a little bit, as does the center. But it's completely usable from f2.8, whatever you're doing. I generally leave this at f2.8, whatever I'm shooting, unless I need the extra depth of field. You don't need to worry about shooting wide open with this lens because it is sharp from 2.8 onwards. While it's only an f2.8, you do get a reasonable amount of bokeh with it if you get close enough to your subject, and the bokeh that you do get is buttery smooth. Being a Zeiss branded lens, you would expect 
good contrast and colour and that again here is the case. The colours are very nice and you get a decent amount of contrast and you get that Zeiss pop as they call it. Flare is handled reasonably well and to be honest I've never had a shot ruined because of lens flare. Colour fringing and chromatic aberration are handled well. You will get a little bit if you've got a backlit subject but it's not too bad it's never going to ruin your shot and it's easily removed in Lightroom. Vignetting, however, is handled relatively poorly. You get quite a lot of vignetting, especially wide open at f2.8. As you stop down, that does improve, however. <sighs> right, I think it's time we go out and get some actual real world photos. So here we are in Lightroom and there's a couple of these shots that I took when I was out in the field. Um, this is the first one which we're going to have a quick look at. This is the raw file straight out of the camera with absolutely no changes or edits on it at all. As you can see I purposely shot this wide open at f2.8. It's backlit, the sun is just over here somewhere and as you can see the background is blurred right out of focus and it's lovely and silky smooth. Now if we have a look right at the centre where I focused, the centre is sharp, this was at, as I say, at f2.8, the centre is completely sharp right here, looks really good to me, as it drifts out, this slowly just drifts out of focus. You can see some colour fringing, there's some green lines, especially noticeable around about here, let's go a bit further in. So you can see that, that colour fringing going on there, but it's not too bad. Nothing down there. There's no flare, even though the sun's over there, so that shot was handled quite well. The colours are quite good. They're a little bit muted, but they're not too bad. I just boosted them, added a bit of orange, and that's the result there. Here's another example, this time shooting directly into the sun without a lens hood, remember. So again, this was shot at f2.8, so it was wide open. If we go to the point where it's focused, one to one, it's pretty sharp and looks good. There's lots of detail in there. There is some sun flare. If we see here, this little mark, there's a little bit of flare there. But overall, some more going on there. Not too bad considering I was shooting directly into the sun. There's a little bit, but it's not too bad. Again, the bokeh of the out of focus background here is nice and smooth. And actually on this one, I don't really see any colour fringing or anything else at all. So that doesn't look too bad at all. If I apply my edits to that one, there you go, much nicer. This one's a much broader scene, but again I shot this at f2.8, so we, just so you can see how sharp it is. If we go right into the focus point, which I think was about here, give that a second. And again, lots and lots of detail. That's all nice and sharp. If we go over to the right, all this is still nice and sharp. It is noticeably softer here on the edge of the frame than it is here in the center. And the same over on the right hand side, but it's still not too bad. Let's go here. I took it to work with me and had just a few random snapshots. Nothing too exciting, but we'll have a look. Again, here, this is f2.8, so just to show the sharpness in the center. There, you can see all the detail. It's nice and sharp, right in the center of the frame. Happy with that. Sun stars, this was shot at f10. So you can get the sun stars if you shoot in the right conditions. You notice that this f10, there is very little, I can't see any color fringing or chromatic aberration or anything at all on there. There's no weird colorings going on, which is pretty good. This photo here, this one was at f2.8. You can see the sun behind the trees. This one there is, it's a big lump of purple here, which is some lens flag going on. And if you look closely around the edge of where the sun is, there is some more up there, more around here, I believe. But overall, it's relatively well handled considering I'm shooting basically directly into the sun. Another bokeh shot here, as you can see the sharpness and the detail in the center is very good. And the background melts away nicely, this bokeh is nice and round maybe a little bit messy tiny bit just there but overall 
very very smooth and lastly we'll just have a look at this one this was shot with the 35mm set to f8 it's an old light painting shot that I did it was taken with the original a7 all the other ones are on the a7r2 if we have a look it's pretty sharp this is to say at f8 plenty of detail really happy with that there's a few other frames from the same light painting session again it's all very sharp it's all handled particularly well and for those interested that's the end result from that light painting session the autofocus is fast accurate and quiet both on the a7 and the a6 series of cameras I've spent most of my time with this lens on the original A7 camera. Even on the oldest Sony camera, it was perfectly usable 90% of the time. On my new A7R2 and my A6500, it's rapid. When you start to get silly low light or areas with very little contrast, it does start to hunt a little bit. It will generally get there eventually. Sometimes it will go past the subject and back again before it actually locks focus, but that is when the light is really dim. Right, this is a real quick low light autofocus test. To give you an idea of how dark it is in here, um, I'm shooting this on the A6500 with the Sigma 16mm 1.4. It's wide open at 1.4 and my ISO is at 6400 to record this video. The 35mm is attached to my A7R2. I'm shooting a wide open at 2.8 and I'm about to set my ISO to 12800 just to get a shutter speed of 1 15th of a second. So it's pretty dark. Face detection and eye autofocus work very well. I've put that to the test. This is the test with the 35mm on the Sony A7. So this is a continuous autofocus test with the original Sony A7. Continuous autofocus, face detection is on, and the focus type is set to wide. So we'll see how this does. Exactly the same test, but this time on the A6500. So, let's see how this performs. My only gripe with the autofocus system is the minimum focus distance. It's 35 centimeters, which sounds reasonable on paper, but for some reason, it feels like it should have been closer. It feels too long, especially when you're using such a small camera and lens, it feels like you should be able to get closer. It's caught me out a few times where I've been thinking, why won't this bloody thing focus? And it's actually because I've been a centimeter or two too close to the subject. Overall, I'm perfectly happy with the autofocus the speed and accuracy and I've never really had it let me down. Price. Now price is where, in my opinion, this lens really falls down. It's a very good lens, but the price is gonna scare people away. And if I'm honest, rightly so. This teeny little lens currently has an RRP from Sony of 859 pounds. Fortunately, you can pick it up for a little bit cheaper off the likes of Amazon, for example, who currently have it for 679 pounds. However, that's still quite expensive for what it is. For comparison, the Nikon Nikkor F 1.8 Prime is 518 pounds. The Sigma Art 35mm 1.4 is 649 pounds. Canon 35mm f2 with IS, 519 pounds. The Samyang 35mm f1.4, 599 pounds. 
you catch my drift. This is more expensive than the vast majority of 35 millimeters on the market at the minute. There's also the Samyang 35 millimeter F 2.8 to contend with, which has only recently come out and that's currently priced at 249 pounds. This thing is 600 pounds more retail than the Samyang version. Now, I don't have the Samyang version to test. I've read, I've heard it's very good, I've heard it's sharp. I heard it does have some minor focusing issues, but is this worth 600 pounds more? Now that sounds very negative. Do bear in mind that you can pick these up used, which is what I did, which is why I don't have the lens hood. I picked this up about a year or so ago. I think I paid about 350, 400 quid for it. Overall, I really like this little lens. It's small, it's light, the colors, punchy the contrast is excellent the center sharpness is really good the focus is fast and silent and accurate there's a lot to like about this lens yes the aperture could and should really be faster at being an f 2.8 you feel that they could have put it as an f2 at least which would have made it a slightly easier sell but f 2.8 is plenty fast enough most of the time it's unassuming size and profile do make it really, really good for event photography, street photography, weddings, etc., where you want to blend in rather than stand out. It's not an intimidating piece of kit, which to me is a massive pro. So can I recommend it? Yes and no. If you need a really small, light, sharp, punchy, contrasty lens, then it's probably one of your best bets. It is potentially, from what I've read, better than the Samyang version, but that comes at a massive additional cost. If you're just after a 35mm, size and portability aren't that important to you, then there are much better options for less money that are considerably faster. So if it fits your niche, honestly, you'll adore it. Go out and grab it. But if you're worried about the 2.8, then it's probably gonna bug you for a long time. I'd look at something faster. Me, personally, I'm never gonna sell it. I really like having the option to throw this tiny little thing on a camera when I just wanna go out and take some snaps. So to me, it's a great lens to have in the kit, but I, even now, wouldn't pay 859 pounds for it. And that's it, there's my thoughts on this Sony 35 millimeter F 2.8. Let me know in the comments below if you agree. Thank you for watching, and don't forget to like and subscribe if you enjoyed the content, and I'll see you next time.